Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Hartley United Methodist Church, whether you're here in person or at home, and we're glad you're here to be a part of our worship. Uh, most, for those here, most of the announcements are printed in your bulletin, uh, or they'll be scrolled at the end of the service for those at home. Uh, just a couple of comments. Again, we have new prayer cards. Uh, now they fit in your pew rack as well as in the pew pads. So you can, with the, the otherwise they're the same, uh, just fill them out clearly and then give them to the ushers as the offerings are collected. Bowling teams are forming. If you, it's a fun league, you don't have to be good at it. You just have to have plan on having fun Sunday night mixed league. There's a sign up sheet down the hall if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, if you have any questions, ask Jerry Weaver or Karen Nowak. Jerry's not here today, is he? Uh, or, or me, I think I know a little bit about it. Um, also, next week there is a church picnic outside uh, instead of coffee hour. Uh, so bring a dish to pass and chairs. And if you can't do that, come anyway and join us. It'll be a good time of fellowship and we'll enjoy the warm, clear, sunny weather. Uh, talk to Karen or Donna if you need more information on that. And there's also a sign up sheet down the hall. Uh, in that same area is also a clean up the clutter out of the basement day. The date will be probably in September. If you're willing to try to do that, if it fits your schedule, please sign up for that so we know that you're interested in it. We are offering communion today, so make sure you have a goblet. Everyone seeking to follow Christ is welcome to participate. Our Covenant Living series concludes this week, so, and since Jesus was the one who established the covenant and they did that through communion, we're going to put a little bit more emphasis on communion this week. So I've grabbed one of the older, traditional, longer services for that. I've adjusted it some to modernize the language and things, so hopefully that'll be meaningful for us at the end of the service. Um, please join each other at the other end of the building for coffee hour after the service concludes. Special thanks to those who work to make that possible for us, as well as uh, Jim Cleveland, who's back in the tech book booth. Our ushers are Jeff and Linda gordon -Neer. Praise Band will be leading our music today, and our lay reader is Terry Priest, who will now guide you in reciting the Apostles' Creed on the yellow font while I give you the prompting questions in the white. You believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's money verse comes from Proverbs 11, 23 through 25. The desires of good people lead only to the best, but wicked ambition ends in angry frustration. The world of the generous gets larger and richer, while the world of the stingy gets smaller and poorer. The person who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others will be satisfied. Please remember to hand in your prayer slips along with the, uh, the, your gifts of offering as we continue to give generously in the offering. <laughs>
recognize that we have been blessed with great abundance. In offering these gifts, may we be strengthened to proclaim your faithfulness and your salvation. Lord, you are with us in our spirits. To you, our hearts are open, our deepest desires and secrets are known. We have come that you may cleanse us from errant thoughts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and be worthy to revere your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the call to worship and the first song. Beloved friends, we have gathered here because we love one another and because love is from God. And everyone who loves has God as his father and knows God. God showed his love for us by sending his only son, Jesus, into the world so that we might live through him. He is here, standing at the door of our hearts, knocking. If we hear him call and open the door, he will come in and, he will fo- and we will fellowship together. Let's invite Jesus into our worship today. Let's open our hearts that we can envision him here with us in all of his holiness. Let's sing, open the eyes of my heart. to 
One of the primary ways we see and sense God is through prayer. When Jesus was on earth, he was quite consistent about making time to pray. In Matthew, Jesus introduces the Lord's Prayer in a sermon as an example prayer to contrast the long-winded, babbling, show-offy prayers of others. Luke records a shorter version when, after Jesus finished praying, a disciple tells Jesus it common practice for spiritual leaders to teach their followers how to pray. He asks Jesus to teach them. Jesus replies, When you pray, say, Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we too forgive everyone who has wronged us. And do not lead us into temptation. So whether you see this prayer as an example, or as specific words to repeat it, be repeated, or both, what we do know is that prayers are not to be uttered insincerely or to show off for others or as a magical incantation, or to, to get what we want, or as a recitation without thinking about what we're actually praying. Which is why I often say as an introduction to the prayer by asking that it may teach us to live as he taught us to pray. You can't sincerely pray, your will be done on earth, and then go through your life and make all your decisions without any thought to what his will is, right? Oh, that was way too slow and soft. <laughs> right? Yes, Pastor. All right. He begins the prayer with Father. There is a thing going around on the internet right now where guys call their wife or girlfriend by using their actual name to see what their reaction is. So I'd, if it was, use my daughter's example, I'd say, Sarah which is no big deal for our family because we always use names, but apparently in a lot of these relationships, they always call them babe. So when they say their name, they said, why are you calling me that? <laughs> are you <laughs> mad at me? <laughs> What's going on? And they go on and on. <laughs> I have some, I don't know what, what your family's been like, but I, in mine, if I use the term father directly to my father, he'd, he'd say probably the same thing, what's going on? Because I always refer to him as dad. Sometimes I might use father if I'm introducing him like third person, like this is my father, but otherwise, and even then I usually say this is my dad. Um, I don't remember ever calling him father in any context. It's respectful title, but it's formal and almost a distancing kind of a thing. So when we say father in this prayer, we need to remember that Jesus is using the Aramaic Abba, and it is not one of those distancing formal types of words. It's a very intimate address between a child and a parent. It's almost more like daddy. So we've got to remember that when he says father. The respect is addressed in the next phrase, which we usually hear as hallowed, holy, or reverenced be your name. In those days, a person's name indicated their essential character. That's why sometimes when, Bible, when people in the Bible had a drastic change of life, their name got changed. This phrase means we recognize who God is and we will act in a way that brings honor to his name, spread his reputation about throughout the earth. Because of the way we live, people get a reputation. God gets a reputation by how we act when we're living in his name just by being Christian. So we need to keep, so we pray that we will live in a way that his name will be honored. People will respect God because of what they see in our lives. And then the next phrase is your kingdom come. Conjures up for us the idea of geographical boundaries and sometimes com complete with palaces and ca castles. And, but a better sense of the phrase is that God's authority is exercised and recognized not only in our hearts, but also more and more in the hearts of all around the world until it finds complete fulfillment in Jesus Christ when he returns again. Give us daily food or bread. 
Bread was a staple food and a metaphor for the provision of everything we really need for earthly existence and living within his will. The challenge is that we sometimes have a hard time distinguishing between what is bread and what is bread pudding. Between what we need and what we think we need, but just really want. The internet is filled with compilations of videos and tweets and TikToks and whatever format you want to use of children and adults having baby-like temper tantrums because they didn't get exactly what they wanted for Christmas or birthday or wedding gifts or for no occasion at all sometimes. The verb form is also in a continuous present tense. Keep on giving us daily. And it encourages daily reliance on, and connection with God. And then the last phrase, forgive us, for we forgive others. It almost sounds like, oh, we forgive others, now you've got to forgive us. That's not how it works. God is not required to give us forgiveness because we earned it by forgiving others. But forgiveness is always grounded in God's mercy, his undeserved but freely given love. There are two ideas here uh, that I want to bring out. If sinful people like us can forgive each other, then how much more will the unsinful, compassionate God forgive us if we ask him. Therefore, we can approach him with confidence when we ask for forgiveness. The second idea is that if we want forgiveness for ourselves when we fail, then how can we not be willing to offer it to another who needs our forgiveness? Forgiveness flows into that final, oh, there's one more phrase, into that final phrase, do not lead us into temptation. For the person who sincerely wants to be forgiven will sincerely not want to cause that pain again in their own lives or the lives of others. They do not want to repeat the sin. The phrase is not implying that God would otherwise lead us into temptation if we don't pray it. James says, don't be deceived. God is not tempted, nor does he tempt anyone. He only gives good and perfect gifts. We know we are forgiven sinners, and we are asking God to lead us away from those circumstances where we expose ourselves to those things in which we are vulnerable, where we're weak, where we tend to fail. We ask God to guide us away from those circumstances, or if it's unavoidable, to keep us alert and empowered to stand up within those circumstances. And by living the prayer, we will be able to praise God and be faithful to him in good times as well as when the circumstances are not pleasant. So let's sing, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless
Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. We've heard now about what to speak to God in prayer, that by, and by living that prayer we could bless God in all circumstances. But in difficult times, sometimes words just don't come. Paul promises the Spirit will speak for us when we can't, but to really live the prayer, it's also important that we take time to listen and just dwell and sense His presence in those challenging times. Now this is a new song for us, and the verses are especially a little challenging to capture the rhythm. Feel free to try along with us, but especially try to join us in the chorus. I put those in yellow font so that you can figure out where that is. Um, but sing as much or as little as you want. Well, not as little as you want. Sing a lot of it, as much as you can, all okay? right? Um, and you'll get the hang of it, and we'll do it until we get it, you know, every month. That we sing for a couple of years for, that's right if it takes that long we'll do it yeah. <laughs> it took us quite a while to get it so that's a, it's, it's understandable but let's enjoy it and really capture the words because it's really meaningful i think for us um, we speak to god the song encourages us to ask god to speak to us Please let me stay and rest 
In your holiness, the word of God speak. When you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Almighty and everlasting God, in your love you have poured out so many amazing blessings on us. You forgive our sins, you cover each of them with your love, you free us from the, your, their captivity and restore our destiny. Fill us, your people, with the spirit of truth, unity, and godly love, that we may serve you and others in holiness. For we want you to be proud and pleased with us, each day we start fresh, returning to you our love as best we can, and as you, as you renew our hearts and revive our spirits. Now pour out even more love on us. Reveal even more of your kindness. Comfort all who are in trouble, in sorrow, in need, in sickness, or in any other adversity. Specifically today, we lift up request from Brett Honor that Valerie Carpenter gets a needed heart for a heart transplant. She had one, but the pilot couldn't deliver due to bad <coughs> weather. Uh, Pat Schley uh, requests to pray for Fran Worthman, who's not feeling well. And we also pray for Ann Martin for a speedy recovery from her surgery on Friday. And then Jan Martin requests uh, a for the family of friends of her grandson down in Tennessee. Um, the, the father uh, has cancer and isn't expected to live very long. His name is Chad Heathcock. And the mother was in a car accident and totaled the car. And so they're in, and they're in a impoverished, like many people are in that area, so we need to lift them up as well. We continue to pray for Ann Martin and Bill Wyckoff, who had also had surgery on Friday. We continue to pray for the children of Johnson City, Tennessee, and those who support them, for those impacted by the Kentucky floods, for Pat's friend Penny, for Jan's friend John McCollum, for Jan's neighbor Charlie Myers, for Linda and Mary DiGiorgio, for the family and friends of Sharon Barrett, and for many others who are not naming today, but they remain in our hearts and minds. Lord, let us hear in our hearts your promise of peace. For we long to hear and feel your assurance. Shine on us with your power and presence. Hover over us with your glorious majesty, allowing your faithfulness to bloom into our life as your goodness shines down on us like the sun, as your love pours down on us blessing after blessing, preparing a path for your coming, even as we live as you taught us to pray, and today we're going to try to sing it a cappella. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom
Through prayer, Jesus wants us to understand that he is with us in every circumstance. Just as David told us in Psalm 23, on the dangerous paths from pasture to pasture, we need not fear because he's with us, leading us, protecting us, anointing us, filling us, chasing after us, good time or bad. He will not let go of us until we are home with him forever. So let's stand as comfortable and sing, You Never Let Go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting a fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with
Jesus gets to the heart of his ever-faithful covenant commitment and how it is felt and communicated to us and from us, primarily through prayer and the Holy Spirit. On the heels of teaching us to pray, he tells them a story. Imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has been traveling, has just showed up at my house, and I have nothing on hand for him to eat. Now, the one inside may answer, Don't bother me. The door is shut. My children are all down for the night. I can't get up to give you anything. But I tell you, even if he won't get up because he's your friend, because of your chutzpah, he will get up and give you whatever you need. Unless the story is misunderstood, Jesus clarifies our need to ask. Be direct and ask God for what you need. Keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who goes on asking receives and he who goes on seeking finds, and to him who continues knocking, the door will be opened. And finally, Jesus clarifies why we will, we will receive what we need. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, would you instead scare him with a live snake on his plate? Or if your little girl asks for an egg, would you trick her with a scorpion or a spider? So if you, even though you are bad, would not think of such a thing, you are decent enough to know how to give your children gifts that are good. How much more will the Father, who conceived you in love, keep giving the Holy Spirit from heaven to those who keep asking him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A quick read of this friend needing bread story almost sounds like if you are ob and obnoxious enough for long enough, then you'll get what you want. It certainly seems like there are many people around who are now using that strategy, even from friends. They want something for nothing or at a big discount or putting in a good word for them on their social platforms, like usually as payment as opposed to money. I guess they're called influencers. And many of them have much less influence than they pretend to have. They just want free stuff. And if the seller or friend actually wants money for their item or service so that they can, you know, like eat, uh, then these people begin to get very angry and threaten them with bad reviews and if they still refuse they will give them a bad review or try to trash their friend on all of their social platforms. This is not what Jesus meant, just so you know. Uh, the situation then was that people, if at all possible, avoided travel in the miserable heat of the midday and at night because of the dangers of bandits of animals, so travel was very unpredictable and hard and exhausting, and they didn't have Google Maps, and they didn't have text, and they didn't have text, and they didn't have phones, and so when you showed up, you didn't know when you were going to get there, and they didn't know when you are coming, if they knew you are coming at all, because they couldn't, you know, hey, I'll email you and tell you when I'm showing up, or I'll text you when I'm close. It doesn't work. And also, the fact that when you did arrive, because the journey was usually long and hard, uh, it wasn't just they wanted a nighttime snack before they hit the hay. They needed to have something to replenish their bodies so they could refresh and recover and restore from that grueling trip. Then on the other side of it, it's not easy to keep things on hand because they didn't have preservatives and food that ruins us all. But, it, but they also didn't have fridges or anything to keep things longer, so bread basically had to be made on a nearly daily basis. So there wasn't a lot left over, and if you're not real rich, you're not going to make a whole bunch and let a half of it go to waste. So that it's, it, wouldn't be, it would be very easy to be surprised and unprepared. And there wasn't a 24-hour grocer around the corner either. <laughs> These two neighbors are friends, as Jesus tells the story probably on the lower side of the economy, 
in homes that when they shut down for the night meant crowding all the crowds, the kids in, crowded, and then on a different, little bit lower level, the animals, so they'd be protected from the wild animals outdoors. And it would be a very disruptive force to the whole household, maybe even the neighborhood, because a lot of times they were, they were like condos. One room, stone things, one right next to the other. So one got really loud because of the animals squawking and everything, so the whole neighborhood would hear. Now we have a rough sketch of what the original listeners would have known without having to be told. Jesus says, suppose or imagine that the friend says, no. The original listeners knew that because they were friends and because of the sacredness of hospitality in their culture, this would probably never happen. So Jesus is just saying, well, just imagine that it did. The neighbor would still comply with a legitimate need because the friend had the boldness, not rudeness, not manipulation, not nagging, not bad reviews on the internet, none of those other things. But because of the boldness that relied on the strength of their relationship to overcome the inconvenience. And the point of the story, if this is true of what imperfect, sinfully selfish human friends do for each other, then how much more will your Heavenly Father be eager to come to your aid and rescue in your legitimate need? And so Jesus encouraged us not to try to, uh, to manipulate God, but to be a consistent friend with God. The translation Terry read captures the verb tense as well for us. We keep on asking, wholeheartedly focused on a desired specific answer. We keep on seeking, faithfully speaking to God and doing what we may need to to receive that answer. And we keep on knocking, that is, with sincerity and consistency, not to badger God, but to spend time with him because that is how he developed friendships in the first place. And then Jesus, having clarified the asking, now clarifies the receiving by telling us what a loving parent does for their children. The example Jesus gives is that the kids gave good and reasonable requests. That's a kind of a condition there, isn't it? Uh, and there is... No way the father would not answer in a bad way, although from what I've seen on the internet, people will do just about anything to their kids nowadays, or their spouses, or their significant others. They call them pranks. I call them just plain mean most of the time. And whether the pranky is secretly in on the prank is hard to tell, because they're good actors, but either way, it sets a pretty miserable example about how we should be relating to each other. And it's all done for the sake of clicks, and laughs at another's expense. Jesus did not put this asking for bad things in the story, but if a child asks for something that is not in their best interest, then no matter how much they keep on repeating the request, the parent will deny the request for the good of the child, and the child may never fully understand why. Did I say that too fast? You got it? Okay. We can only trust, James says, what James says about our God of power and love, that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, and he does not vary from this just because we knowingly or unknowingly ask something that's not in our best interest. Four-year-old wants to drive the car. You cannot have the keys. Well, if they badger me enough, maybe I'll give in and give them the keys. No, you don't, do you? No. Just don't do it because you know that's not safe for the kid and it's not safe for everybody around the kid if you do that. The friend gives on the basis of an imperfect human friendship. Likewise, imperfect fathers ought to know how to love and give their children good gifts, not useless or dangerous ones. How much more then will God know how to give what we truly need? The good things is how Matthew qualifies it. But while Luke speaks of the ultimate good gift of the Holy Spirit, whose presence is continually at work within our lives. This is the promise of covenant friendship conversation. His presence, his peace, whether we sense it or not. The Holy Spirit. When everything is going great or when the bottom falls out, what more or better thing can you ask of God than his presence to be with us? To be your friend, your neighbor, your soulmate, your strength, your confidence, 
your provider of every good gift that you receive. And we, as we conclude our series in covenant living, Paul describes what God did in Christ to allow us to enter in and maintain that covenant, proving just how much he knows how to give good gifts. This is what he wrote, just selected verses from Colossians 2. When you came to Christ, he performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. Therefore, in the same way you receive Jesus, our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way. For you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. What he did to drive sin out of our lives and its power, the power of sin also out of our lives and to continue to do so with us and our, <clears throat> our devotion to him responds to that. It is reflected in the covenant Jesus established with those who believe in him at the communion table. And I've got to get a drink of water before I go on, too, because praise band wears my throat out. <laughs> no, 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 praise band. That wasn't a call to come up yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I just said it wore my throat out. <laughs> Give me a couple pages. You can, you can come if you want, but I'll go to get coffee here. Yeah. All right. Okay. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and tolerant patience with your neighbors and in, intend to live a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and mourn our many varieties of sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We do earnestly repent we are sincerely sorry for our misdoings. Remembering them fills us with grief. Have mercy upon us, Father. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us of all that is past and grant that from now on we may serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who sincerely repent and turn to you in true faith. Have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what the comfortable words of Scripture say to all who truly turn to the Lord. This statement is completely reliable and should be universally accepted. Christ Jesus entered the world to rescue sinners. That is why Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Put, my yoke, put on my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. If we freely admit that we have sinned, we find God utterly reliable and straightforward. He forgives our sins and makes us thoroughly clean from all that is evil. For our advocate before the Father is Jesus Christ the righteous, the one who made personal atonement for our sins and for those of the rest of the world 
as well. And so with these words of assurance, we turn in praise. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill to all. We praise and bless you. We worship, give thanks, and glorify you, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takes away the sins of the world, you who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us and receive our prayer. For you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Okay, the great thanksgiving has responses. They're close, but a little bit different, so read carefully. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is very fitting, right, and our duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now the praise band can come. The Almighty God, and, and, and by the way, congregation, in just a second I'm going to be talking about the bread and the cup, but usually that's when we eat and drink, but in this particular ritual, it's not. So just hang on while I go through that and don't eat or drink at that point. The Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who is ten, in his tender mercy gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made on that cross by the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and instituted in his holy gospel the command for us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. And so, most merciful Father, we humbly ask that you bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and cup, so that as we receive them according to the Son, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection, we may be partakers of the divine nature through him. In the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness. Mercifully accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly asking that you grant, by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passions. So let's offer ourselves in covenant to God through song.
Present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto you, humbly asking that all who participate in this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly good favor. Because of our varied sins, we are unworthy to offer you to you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this, our obligated duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. O merciful Lord, we do not presume to come to your table by trusting in our own righteousness, but in your many and varied and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Therefore, gracious Lord, grant that as we participate in this sacrament of your Son, Jesus Christ, we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. Take and eat. the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. May preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Lord, encourage us to de depend more fully on you, to connect our lives to you, the Almighty One, who is the source of our life. Teach us to live as you taught us to pray, open to your love and purpose in your creation, willing to be made into the likeness of Christ, who went to such great lengths to let go of our sins, offer us forgiveness, and adopt us into the family of a merciful Father. Amen. Now in response, let's stand as comfortable and worship and honor him with all that we are as we prepare to leave and worship him throughout the week.
and beauty break through the clouds and shine down on you from heaven. Go in the name of the one whose mighty power has raised you to new life and has plunged your spiritual roots into the depth of his life and establishes you in your journey of faith in covenant with him.